So once again, the boss law is that if, if you have got a closed surface, then the flux for a closed surface is given by sigma q and closed by epsilon 0. This thing is called the Gauss law. Okay, this equation is called the Gauss law. Now, let's discuss a few things about it. Suppose there is a plus charge, let's say 1 to plus 1. And around it, I make an imaginary surface, let's say I make a cube. Okay, so this charge is now inside the cube. Can you see it? Sure. And suppose some thin lines come out from this charge. Okay, they will move in you know, different directions and they come back. Now instead of this cube, if I would make, so let's say the cube is number one. Okay, cube is surface number one. Close the surface number one. Now close the surface number two. Let's say I make a sphere around the positive charge. This is suppose a sphere around the positive charge. That's our close surface number two. Through which of these will more thin lines pass? Through which of these? Will more field lines pass? Same. Same. It's more easier than what you might have thought. Electric field lines starting from positive charge will go all the way till infinity. So, do you see if one field line will cross the cube, it will also pass the sphere? Second, yes. Third, yes. Fourth, yes. Fifth. So, what do we have? What do we have? Same field lines. Yes, same number of field lines will pass. Whatever that number is, but it is same. Here, quite interesting that it means that the flux for the first surface and the flux for the second surface, their areas are different. Suppose this is a larger sphere, its area is more. Surface area is obviously more. Yes or no? Not only that, its shape is different. This is a cube and that's a sphere. Still, the flux is same. flux formula Have a look at formula. If distance is less and distance is more, would an electric field change? Change that distance change that. You know that? If from a point charge you take this point, it's closer. Electric field is more or less. Over here it is. So flux. But doesn't happen. Next, look at area. This one has area of all these six faces. Yes or no? It has less area. On the other hand, this sphere will have more area. Clear? So you see, the two factors are opposing each other. Electric field will be less for second surface, but for the first surface it will be more. Then electric field for the, sorry, area for the second surface will be more, but area for the first surface will be, but angles are also changing, I hope you realize, because here the normal will be in this direction, here it will be in this direction, but here in a sphere the normal is always like this, I hope that makes sense. Right? Perpendicular to the tangent, or it's a normal level to see it, yeah, then go back to this. I don't think it should get from the point. Clear or not clear? But the change is there, so if blocks change, even more weird. Suppose I draw a larger sphere. So, so that. Will blocks change for that sphere? Or not change? No, not change because look at the field line. We do going no jo. Same thing, mobile jo apur under the thing. Just look at field line. One, two, three. The same number of field lines will go through it. Yes or no? Yes. So the flux will remain same. So we are tempted to write a sentence that the shape or size of the closed surface. does not matter for finding flux. I hope that is clear. 
Only one thing matters. If you want to find flux for a closed surface, only one thing matters. What is that one thing? Charge enclosed. Because whatever charge is enclosed, accordingly field lines will come out. Did you understand? Right? So again, even if instead of these nicely shaped surfaces, even if we take something like this, then also the flux for that will be same. I don't that's clear. अबे थोड़ी थोड़ो आइडिया आयो कि लॉ के माहौल में डेट द चार्ज डिसाइड्स हाउ मेनी फील्ड लाइंस विल कम आउट नॉट द शेप ऑफ दिस थिंग मेक सेंस और नॉट आज एक बार में देखो फील्ड लाइंस तो जेबी बारह बनी हुआ नहीं थे वैसे तो क्यों और अस्पियर और इरेगुलर शेप लाइक दिस व्हाट इट एवरीवन अंडरस्� Okay, so that is what is the cost, right? Again, charges outside simply don't matter. Why? Why is it that the charge outside doesn't affect anything? As far as flux is concerned, the flux is what that. Let me give you this. Let me tell you one. Suppose here is a sphere. Okay, this is an imaginary surface, closed surface. Here you put one coulomb charge outside, under my knee. Empty. How much is the charge enclosed by this surface? Zero. How much is the charge enclosed by this? Zero. Zero. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Right. Let's try to find out flux. So, God is telling you that it would, would it should be zero. Yes or no? Yes. Let's verify. If you put a charge here, then wouldn't there be like a field? So, field line will come up. You might be tempted to say, no, sir, you're wrong. You see, electric field lines are crossing the surface there is flux i agree there is flux but what happens now do you see what i'm saying yes one field line enters two field lines enter let's say so inward flux is considered positive or negative negative yes or no so two field lines have come in so that's a little bit of negative flux but then those same two field lines will also go outwards. So plus minus two plus two. total plus yes. minus two. Yes or no? Yes. Right? But now suppose instead of this, without having any charge here, let's say we change this a little bit. Okay. Suppose we put a negative charge at its center, let's say minus one. Then those field lines which are actually going there. Right, and here, and here. Some of them will bend, and they will come inside the negative charge. Is that clear? So basically, this field line will not go everywhere; it will just end here. They will have passed it. Instead of that, it will end here. What about this one? This one might bend like this and come here and end. This one might bend like this and come here and end. You get what I'm saying? So now this sphere, this sphere has a negative. Not only that, there will be some field lines that will go all the way around and come back in. Right? So, what are we having? We are having that now this sphere has negative flux. Clear why negative? Obviously, because the charge inside is negative. So, it's not a big surprise that it's a negative. Got it? Sure. So, this is what happens when you put charges outside or inside. Now, for a moment, if I if you think that okay, like here the flux is minus one coulomb by epsilon zero because there's a minus one. Ah, would I say what if we remove this from outside? How will the situation change? I hope you have read this end. How will it change if you remove this? Instead of coming from here, the field lines will now be straight, but the number of field lines will not change. Does that make sense? Or not clear? Instead of coming from the positive charge and going into the negative charge, they will now become straight. So still the same number of field lines will come. Did you understand? Still the same number of field lines will come. Understood? So by putting a charge on the outside, what you are really doing is you are changing E of course. But still somehow the Angle theta will change. For example, when the positive charge is here, you see the field lines come like this at different angles. Yes or no? The moment you remove this charge, all the field lines become straight. 
clear clear or not clear so by putting charges outside you are changing e and you are also changing t time ultimately the flux remains got it so remember this charges outside have absolutely nothing to do with flux flux only depends on the charges and close electric field depends on all the charges see that's the interesting thing if someone drops me how much is the electric field here then it depends on this charge then it also depends on this charge and if you put one more it will depend on that one one two and three superposition principle but if someone says how much is the flux for this sphere then it doesn't depend on this doesn't depend on this it only depends on what is this got it fine that's all Thanks for questions related to cost. I'm done with the explanation. Do you have questions? Anyone having questions about cost? All right. So we're going to question number fifth. No, we, we did that, right? 15 and 16, both went up. Now 17. Careful measurements of the electric field at the surface of a black box. Black box means basically something inside which you can't see. Everything is hidden. Black box here means something inside which you can't see. Okay, you don't know what's there. So... Careful measurements of field at the surface of a black box indicate that there is net outward flux. Okay, outward flux. Positive or negative? Positive. So, how much is the flux for that box? Start writing and drawing. Okay, let's say here is a box. Alright, we don't know what's inside. But we know that coming out from this box, there are some field lines. Correct or not? And how much is the flux? 8 into 10 raised to 3 Newton meter square or cooler. Alright? Is this fine? What's the question? What is the net charge inside the box? Inside means enclosed by the box, isn't it? Question clear? So, what do we have to find? Sigma, Q, and close, isn't it? How to do it? Is there a relation between them? Five. Five. The cost law. Okay. So this will be simply phi into epsilon zero. Yes or no? Yes. Fine. Okay. How much is phi? Eight into ten raised to three. Eight epsilon zero eight minus eight phi ten raised to minus twelve. Multiply yourself. Part B K. Okay. Right. Okay. What's the part B? Do calculations at your own time, everyone. Okay? We will proceed. Huh. If the net outward flux through the surface of the box were zero, would you sorry, would you conclude that there were no charges inside the box? Why or why not? So presenting a new case where the flux for this same box is now zero. It's not this much, then say it is zero. Then they are asking, does it mean does it mean that inside this box there are no charges? Yes or no? No. If yes, why? If not, why? Okay, you have explained yourself. Okay, phi is zero. So how much is sigma q and close? Can sigma q and close? Zero. How much? Zero. Zero? Yes or no? Yes. Sure? What does that mean? The charge inside is zero. Does that mean that there are no charges? Total charge is zero. Everyone got it? Sigma. Total charge enclosed is zero. So, do you realize that there are possibilities like this? Suppose there is a proton and one electron also inside. Then what is the total charge? Zero. Okay, and the flux will be zero. Is that understood? Okay or not? Right? So, we cannot say that there are no charges. We can only say that the total or the net charge is zero, but charges may be there. 
Favorite MCQ from this chapter. Question 8. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is A point charge plus 10 microcoulomb is at a distance. They forgot that. At a distance of 5 cm directly above the center of a square of side 10 cm. Okay? As shown in the figure. So, I think it would be even better if you imagine what is given. Right? There is a square. A notebook, for example. Above the notebook, what's there? There is a chart. At how much distance? Can you imagine that? Okay? If you can't. Make sure you take a notebook and try to see what's going on. So let's say here is that square. Square has side 10 cm. Correct? Above this center, over here, we have a chart. How much chart? Q equal to 10 micro. And what's the distance of that chart from this point? Now, what do we have to find? What do we have to find? Magnitude of electric flux through the square. Okay. First of all, if you want to find flux, well, we have to wait. One. If it's a flat surface and uniform field, we can do this. If it's a flat surface or you know, sorry, a curved surface or the field is not uniform, then you can do this. And then the third thing, if it's a closed surface, then you can use the Gauss flux. So there are three ways to find flux. Yes or no? Yes. But look, I'm not sure what you think is possible. Got it? Okay. It's first suitable. Electric field of a point charge. Is it uniform? Electric field of point charge. Uniform or non-uniform? Yes, that's perfect. Depends on distance, isn't it? KQ by R square. Back in the diagram, talk or it is not the cover for you. How is uniform one? No one? I'm sure you ordered it. Okay, so this is not uniform. Fine. So far, not good. Second one, okay, we can do it. Possible. But it's very, very, very tough to be very fair. Because distance of, you know, if you want to do integration, you have to divide this into small parts, correct? Do you realize every point will be at different distance? Okay, it's going to be a nightmare to be very honest. Okay, it will be very very tough. So now that leaves us with third one. But the third one is not applicable. Why? Because Gauss law can only be used for? I can prove it. Square is a oval. Isn't it? So we will use symmetry. You see, the way these values are given, they are inviting us to use symmetry. Let me tell you how. Okay. What if, to make it a closed surface, we construct a cube? Okay. Did you understand? So basically, what is given is a charge is placed somewhere here, right above the roof's head. Alright? Okay. Because you are sitting nearly at the center of the room. Right? Okay, so then we are given the floor. 10 cm that way, 10 cm that way. And this height is 5 cm. So if you want to make it symmetric, we can make a box or a cube. Correct or not? So, Jehu a floor, Jehu a ceiling. Yes or no? Yes. You understand what I am saying? Yes. So, this distance will also be 5. Yes or no? to make it cement. Okay, then we can erect the walls. Do you realize all the walls are going to be squares? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. And now where is this chart? 
Is it exactly at the center? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Sure. Okay. So now is this thing a closed surface? Yes. Open Jacko my girl. Is this a closed surface? Yes. Yes? You yes. mean a closed surface. Charge is inside. So how much will be the flux for the cube? How much will be flux for the cube? Q by epsilon 0. Yes or no? Yes or no? Flux for the whole thing is Q by epsilon. Got it. Fine. But that's not the answer. Another question is what's the question where to find the flux only through the floor, the lower surface? Is that okay? But a cube has how many identical surfaces? Six. Six. And this start is right at the center. So whether you go left, right, up, down, front, back, everything is same. So for one surface, for six surfaces, you see some few lines pass here, 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 some will go through there, 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 like that. So for one surface, how much will it be? Divided by six. Clear or not? Yes. So that's it. So five, the one that you want to find. Is equal to q by 6 epsilon 0, like in bracket, divided equally amongst 6 surfaces. So now, next time, will you be able to use your imagination and construct such things? Okay. Is this the only way? No. Is this the only simple way? Yes. Okay. You are welcome to try it like this. See you next year. <laughs> Alright? Okay? It's not impossible to be very frank. It is not impossible. But it's very, very long and very long. Okay? So this is what we get. Clear? Right. Right. Fine, let's go to the example. I don't know what number that would be. 8, F, X, 10, over there. 11, 11, what are you doing? 11. Example 11. We have solved a question related to cube earlier also, haven't we? Yes. Example 11. It's on page number 35 in this book. The electric field electric field components in the figure are EX, EX is given, EY, EZ are 0. So electric field is only on which axis? X axis. Okay, on Y axis and on Z axis the electric field is 0. zero. Got it? Sure? Okay. How old question my Electric field was just in high current. Yeah, that is a exercise my Okay, and alpha's value is also given, so let's just start with that. So, question, can the example? 11. So, E vector is equal to, what is E x given? Alpha Alpha under root x. Okay, so this we can always write as 800 root x i carat. Okay, this is i carat. Do you understand why I am writing i carat? Yes or no? Yes. X component is given. Y component and Z component are zero. No need to write. Clear. Okay. Fine. Now what do we have to find out? There's a cube. Let's draw a figure of another cube. Do you realize electric field is not uniform? Actually, let me not draw it. It's not uniform. Do you realize it's not uniform? Or not clear? Electric field is not uniform. Uniform one again. Same. Are they uniform one again? Same every where? Okay, look at this. It depends on depends on x coordinate. So it cannot be same everywhere. Clear? But when it, if something depends on x coordinate, it cannot be the other way. For example, I am not drawing it, I just indicate that E vector is this way. Direction is same. Now let's draw the Q. Okay.
So here's the cube. Right? Now, there are how many surfaces? Six. Six. Right? So just like we did earlier, one, two are left and right, three, four are top and bottom, five and six are front and back. Now, of course, you can also draw this cube in a boring manner like this. Okay? But thank you, this is also very useful. Did you see what I brought? That's the cube. Okay? Now, is side length given? Is side length given in the question? A. A. A is value of A. So, side length is A, we will put the value later. A is not enough. A. Okay, so this distance is also k, and this vertical is also k. Uh, okay, is this distance here? Why am I asking you that? Because q is placed somewhere here. So if x coordinate will change, the value of electric field will change. Not given, that means there is a mistake in the question. If there is k. Take that distance also as A. Missing information, nothing else. That information is missing. Got it? Okay, it should be there. Without, without this value, you cannot get done. Okay? Yeah. So now, let's begin. So first of all, we will draw area vector for number 1. Area vector for number 1. Where is number 1 on the left side? What's the direction of area vector for number one? Left side. Left side. Left side. Why left side? Outward. Normal. Because this is a closed surface. So area vector number one will be in this direction. Okay. And electric field is in which direction? Right side. Okay. So what's the angle between the M? One. Okay. Is the surface flat? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Is the field uniform? Yes. Is the field uniform? No. No, not uniform? Oh. There's a slight change. See, if you look at all the points on this surface, do you realize they have same x coordinate? Yes. Who understood that? I'm saying all these points that I've marked, they have same x coordinate. So, I will point to the x coordinate. I hope you are seeing that. Okay, when CT doesn't help, 2D helps. Fine, is this clear? All the points on this surface, left side surface, they have same x coordinate. How much? Same x coordinate, but how much? A. A. Is that clear? X equal to A. So, for surface or case 1, phi 1 is equal to. Okay, but you love it negative. Right? Everyone okay with this? Okay, what will be electric field for any point on this surface? It will be same. That's why we can use this simple formula. I hope you understand what I'm saying. We can only use this formula if the value of E and direction of E is same everywhere and the surface is flat. Yes, it's same everywhere. Follow. 800 root A. Clear or not? Why did I write X as A? Because all these points have X coordinate A. Fine. What's the area of that face? A1 area is How much? A squared. Because edge, sorry, the face of a cube has area A squared. Clear? It's possible. Right, so finally this shall become minus 800 A square root A. Okay, now send for the other side for surface 2, 5, 2. Where is the area vector for the second one here? Right side. Right side. Where? I want to know what the done. You can see it. Okay, then angle theta is Okay, then angle between electric field and area vector? Zero. Zero. Sure? Zero. Okay. And how much will be the electric field at this, 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 this point? Will it all be same? Yes. yes or no? Yes. No, so much for the At all these points, will electric field be same? Yes. yes. 
How much? Cut it to it. Cut it to it. What will be electric field? Raise your hand if you can tell me. What will be the electric field at any of these points? Raise your hand. अरे हमने तो अलग बता बोल दिया था सुपर मंडल डर हो जाओ क्या पहला मरे कोर्ट से तो उठा दे सुबह मन मन अरे ई की फॉर्म में लाइट नहीं थे फिगर मजा आने थे वैल्यू कूपन नहीं थे दैट्स ऑल ओके वेरी गुड यस बोला एंड ऑफ एंड एंड लाउडर एट हंड्रेड रूट टू एट हंड्रेड रूट ऑफ टू क्लियर क्लियर हो ना चल कैमरा So plus zero is one. How are you? Okay. Now what surface? Three. Where's three? Three is at the top. Where is the area vector? Upwards. Okay. So angle between area vector and electric field? Ninety. Ninety. Now here I know. I know that it's not going to be uniform. Why? Here and here and here and here and here. The x coordinate is changing. Yes or no? Yes. As you go towards the right side, x coordinate will change. But luckily for us, the angle is always ninety. Whether you take small area here or you take small area here, the angle between electric field and area vector is always ninety. What did you get? Barber ne? Make the integration curve. So here, what does it mean? Clear y zero. Look in our bracket. E vector perpendicular to a vector. Okay, for number four, which is at the bottom. Zero. Same logic. Zero. For number five, which is in front. Zero. One point zero. Yes, zero. Area vector will come towards you. You, those who are sitting at home, right? Yes. Sorry. So <laughs> that. Okay, so area vector will be towards that side, and electric field is towards the right side. Got it? Yes. Angle between them? I know. Back in what is zero? So total loss? Five one plus five one. Remaining around zero. I have got to cut that down. Yeah, don't do it. Fine. ओके अब इधर से आएगा इधर से आएगा वैल्यू ऑफ ए व्हाट्स पार्ट बी पिक्चर दिया है हाँ चार बीस तक ही ओके सो इफ यू फाइंड द टोटल फ्लॉक्स देन कैन यू फाइंड चार विदी विदी मींस इनसाइड हाउ टू डू दैट फ्लॉक्स आ गया दिस इज अ क्लोज सरफेस यस और नो देन फॉर क्लोज सरफेस हाउ कैन यू फाइंड � By using the law, isn't it? Sigma, you went through the point. Clear or not? Yes. No one is doing it. One time, I have enjoyed the budget. No one is doing it. Got it? Yes. Sure. Yes. Right. So that's all. Okay. Right. Now, let's do the trail call. ओके And uniform with same magnitude, but in negative x direction for negative. Did you understand or not clear? On right side electric field is towards right. On left side electric field is towards the left. Okay, let's draw that. I am erasing this. I am doing homework. I am bullying you now. Log tarre jo ke ab toh log homework hai kuch hai. Chidik maaf kya kuch hai sir? Toh log hai na hi mein dekhte hai. 
the point or on the match or on. And make sure you keep doing it as the topics are completed. For example, we have finished about four C's and electric field. Is it a big topic? Take care of the upper class. Take care of the upper class. Take care of the upper class. Okay, after the chapter is complete. Okay, and the assignment actually be a chapter, isn't it? One and two. So after that much portion is complete. In three days, I will ask for the solution from you. Got it? Okay, till the third day, man, do. But look, but the third one, everyone knows that. इतने साथ साथ ये टॉपिक टू टॉपिक करता जब जे टॉपिक पूरा थे जाए ना करना पड़े ये बात होएगी क्वेश्चन राइट इट्स ओके इफ यू कैन डू वन और टू और क्वेश्चन इट्स माइंड ये नो कोई टेंशन नहीं लो साउंड नो करो तो ये नो टेंशन ले लो ओके हियर सो वेल व्हाट डज इट से दैट सपोज दिस इज व्हाई on left side electric field is towards the left side. Clear or not clear? Okay. Now it is given that magnitude is 200 I carat. Okay. B must say much the magnitude. How much magnitude of electric field everywhere? 200 Newton per coulomb. Direction log to study. B over point log. Okay. Now a right circular cylinder. Right circular cylinder means whose base is perpendicular to the axis. Aunai. This is also a cylinder, but it is not called a right cylinder. Right cylinder कौन है क्या? Aunai नहीं है right cylinder. What is? तो बोला क्या क्या नोटिस? Right ये देख right circular cone कौन है क्या? ये तो base circle. And the axis is perpendicular to the base. That's called a right circular cone. If the right is equal to one, I hope you get the idea. Uh, very good. Idea. Anyway, coming back to this. Uh, so there is a right circular cylinder as shown in the figure. You see, like this. Okay. Now, and the center is at origin. Radius I put the length I put. What is the length? What is the length? 20 cm. How much? 20 cm. 20 cm. And radius is? 5 cm. Fine. Have we given any other information? This is what is it? Yeah. Fine. Now, both sides are? Ah, it's a part. Right in half. Okay. Then, that's it. We have to find? Net outward flux. Net outward flux. Through the cylinder. Through each plant pieces. To each flat piece, it will find out. Okay, fine. No problem. A. Through each flat. We say, what you say, everyone understands that? Yes. Okay. Let's find it for the right side. Okay. First question Is this a flat surface? Yes. A flat surface, can it? Yes. Okay, lay your head towards left side or right side? Right side. Can we let it be right side? Right. Let's call this number one. Let's call this number 2. Okay, so A1 is towards the right. Got it? So how much will be the flux for that first surface? Get it. Hurry up. Done. Angle to the kaya jave se. Okay, area to aure ke ni find out the. E A is pi r square. Then pi r square, five centimeter square, very flat. Into ten raised to minus four. Clear and write down the units. Unit meter square per coulomb. Okay. So that's the flux. Same thing for second. Yes or no? Yes. Sure. As a sign change here. Wouldn't the sign be? Opposite because the electric field is in opposite direction. I'm a right side doesn't like so I'm a left side. So negative now. Yeah. Electric field. 
is called what? Line angle. Okay, so here we define something called lambda. Lambda that is linear mass charge. Clear or not? Okay, we had a little bit of discussion about this in the point. If you bend this, it will become like a ring. Correct? Fine, first one clear. Second, instead of being on a line, it can be on an area. Suppose there is a sheet. And there is charge everywhere on the sheet. Do you understand? Then here charge is not on a line, but charge is on an area. So this sigma, sigma for surface charge density. Okay, so this is basically called a surface charge. This is called a line charge. How mass now This would be equal to dQ by dA. Ah, uniform AY is equal Q by L and Q by K. I hope you remember that. For uniform, you can just ignore differentiation and write as a ratio. Fine, this is clear. But third one, third one. On volume. Line means on length. This is on area. And third one will be on volume. So that would be called volume charge. Volume charge means, for example, there is, let's say, a cube. Okay, filled up of, I mean, a cube of some material. Okay, let's say glass. And it is charged everywhere. Do you get it? This is an example of volume. Mostly in your syllabus, volume charge questions are related to spheres. Most. Alright? So there, rho is equal to dq by dv. Is this understood? Yes. But the same answer? Give mass power to the Mass per unit length. Is the mass per unit area, mass per unit volume. This is called density. Here it's called charge density. Okay, volume charge density, surface charge density, and linear charge density. Got it. Now talking of the It's same as mass, in fact. Okay. I hope all these similarities are making you realize. Or ask at least the question, why has nature made mass and charge so similar? Right? Though they are different, you see, charge is not same as mass. There is one difference, mass cannot be negative. Charge can be negative, that's what we say. Or we say that charge has two types. What are the types of charge called? Polarity. But mass has no such polarities. Right? Actually, it's not called polarity, but there is something called matter and antimatter. Not like matter and doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, matter and antimatter. Okay, you avoid. Right? Right. So, let's read this question. An infinite uniformly charged sheet. So, there is a sheet like this. It has charge. Question 10. With surface charge density sigma cuts through a spherical Gaussian surface. Now, what do you mean? Never mind. Akali Gaussian surface one again. Gaussian surface means that imaginary or real surface, whatever it is, for which you are going to use Gaussian. I repeat what I have said. Gaussian surface means that imaginary or real surface for which you will use Gauss law. Okay? Why? Because Gauss law is always to be used on which kind of surface? Floor surface. Floor surface. Right? So that surface will be called Gaussian surface. Understood? Simple thing. Gaussian surface is always closed. If Gaussian surface is open, then you are either sleeping or you have not understood. <laughs> right? Only one of the two possibilities is right. Gaussian surface must always be closed. Alright. Anyway. 